right, we got a really good one for you today. We're gonna do a little casting out in the foundry here, and it's gonna be a really simple sign, but a cool sign. Let's get started. This was the first light of the year. Surprisingly enough, there was only a couple small glitches I had to work out, and, and nothing major. If you guys have ever put anything away from a year that you built yourself, you know exactly what I'm talking about. I came up with something over the winter on how to keep these straight. Originally, I was going to put a foam backing on them. And then I came up with this idea of actually having them sit on some metal bars. Now, the round metal bars, they actually worked in this, but there's probably a better system I'm going to work out later. This will stop the significant warping that I've had on some of my other failed products. And it'll allow me to support it in a nice even manner as I get sand everywhere in the whole mold. Later, these are actually going to be pulled out. Now, if you've never seen Lost Foam casting before, or you're curious, I've got a ton of other Lost Foam casting videos. You should probably check them out. And there's going to be a few more because I've got a whole slew of projects coming up this year. In fact, this whole month here is kind of going to be dedicated to casting. One thing that I found is, before I was using a recip saw, but this concrete vibrator that I came across is working amazingly. I mean, it packs it right tight the way I want it, and I don't have too many air pockets left in it when I'm done. The only one major thing is, is it kicks off a lot of sand dust, so I had to kind of do it outside and make sure I was upwind from all of the dust, or wear a mask, of course. And probably for a lot of you guys out there, you pretty much expected this to happen. I'm packing it in the sand, so I did end up getting them out. It was kind of the sword in the stone situation. And I don't expect it to actually alter the pattern too much with having that void in there behind. Because I'm going to go back and I'm going to repack it again. And there's a lot of other sand that's supporting it. <laughs> now, because we're melting a lot of like random aluminum stuff here, I've got a lot of slag on top. And I've actually got steel that's sitting on the bottom. So I'll have to be careful not to pour that into the mold. And because it's such a wet season here, I had to be really be careful to make sure everything was super, super dry, especially if I'm sticking it into the molten aluminum. And of course, before I actually start moving the molten aluminum, I wanted to make sure that I had a really good path to get in there to get it out. I'm going to be heading out a little bit later this week to grab a leather apron because I think I want a little bit more protection for my legs and maybe throw some gaiters on the top of my boots just in case. Now, like I said earlier, there was a ton of slag that was sitting on top, so I just had to throw that out and off to the side, and I'll pick that up later <laughs> so I don't have to run it over with the lawnmower or any of that nonsense. So the crucible that I'm using is a metal crucible. There's actually a video on it. They're not exactly ideal, and some people say they're dangerous. However, I'm ready to accept the risks that come with using it. Now, I've got a good wind coming from my back, so this is the direction that I'm going to come in on it, because there's going to be a bit of off-gassing from this foam. Now, the soup can's basically put over that polystyrene sprue, so to speak, and this is how it's going in there. Now, it's going to keep kind of surging and going in, and then I'm going to have to go back and top it up. But the key is to having a good pour is to make sure that that soup can never runs dry. If the soup can runs dry, the sand collapses and, <laughs> well, there's a lot of disappointment in your future when you go to unmold this. Now, we got a crucible full of aluminum and I'm not going to do any pours today, so I'm going to turn this aluminum into ingots. Keep in mind, this mold, I've already preheated over everything, so it's already hot. I'm just tapping the aluminum here and you can actually see it jiggle in the middle. You might want to scroll back and have a quick look at that. Now I'm tapping it again and I notice that it's not jiggling, so I can roll this over and knock it out of the mold and do it again. In fact, I didn't quite get all of it out of there, but I'm not overly too worried because I'm really just going to remelt everything here. Now, let's head back over to the mold and see how it made out. I was actually a little bit worried about this one because the sprue was a little bit higher than the actual, the actual top of the casting, yeah, so I wasn't sure if the aluminum was going to flow up yeah, around and past that. Almost getting an airlock is what I thought was going to happen. Now, let's pick this up and walk over and... Oh, uh, no, wait. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not 20 years old anymore. I'm going to grab the dolly and do this the smart way, not the hard way. And as I was wheeling this around without a plan, <laughs> I, I realized I was going to have to pick this up anyways and pour the sand in the small job box. Notice how I have this screen here to catch any of the casting stuff that's going to come out so I don't have to dig through there anymore. 
don't click off quite yet because I'm going to throw some epoxy and clean this up quite a bit more and I think you're going to be really impressed with the end product. But for now, let's get rid of the sand and have a quick look at what it looks like before we clean it up. That is pretty darn amazing. I am pretty stoked. I'm pretty stoked about this. Let's pour some water on it and get a better look at it. Now it's just a matter of seeing if it's straight. And I'm pretty darn impressed with that. I head downstairs to the woodworking room and I just use the woodworking tool to cut the aluminum off and then basic hand tools to clean it up. There's kind of little scabs and warts here and there from the casting. And then I'm gonna drill a small hole in it so we can bolt it to the wall later. And Mr. McMillan is gonna be pretty stoked about this. Also, I decided that it'd be important to throw some two-part epoxy with some black dye in there and it really makes everything kind of pop out. Let's have a closer look at it. Hey, since you like this video, check out this other video. I know you're gonna like this one as well.